Hello and welcome to Friday at 420 on this Tuesday at 430. It's Mike Neighbors <laughs> along with you. <laughs> we are live on Facebook. Hi, where have you found us? I'm sure there's two or three people so far. Uh, welcome. Welcome to another edition of Friday at 420. It's great to have you along. Uh, we're just joking about we're trying to figure out what day of the week it is. And you know what? It doesn't really matter what day of the week it is. All that matters is we've got a great show lined up for you. A very special guest. He's been with us before. Always have a lot of fun uh, with our special guest uh, when he's been here in the past, so we look forward to that. Uh, but before we get to introducing our special guest, we got to introduce the panel, uh, my mentor, my life coach, my only one and true, only true love, Patrick Coppolino, everybody. Buongiorno. Buongiorno, Patrick. How are you? I'm good. Are you good, good, man? Are you really yeah. good? I yeah, saw you in a suit good. on the Instagram. What was going on there? Yeah, it was uh, my cousin got married on Friday. Wow. I didn't even know you owned a suit, dude. I know it was my first one. I bought it. I literally picked it up Thursday. <laughs> I got it tailored earlier in the week. Picked it up Thursday. Wore it Friday. Now I own it. Now I own a suit. That is uh, that's awesome, man. So it was a lovely wedding. Was it everything oh, yeah. you hoped it was, for? It yeah. was really fun. It was probably honestly one of the funnest weddings I've been to in a long time. Did it? it was, uh, did it? Here's an interesting question. I think guys in the audience would have this question for you. Did Did it give Lindsay any ideas? Pat, no. No, nope. are you are you, yeah, are you not gonna? A, we made a baby that night. You're not, <laughs> you're not gonna tell tell. You're not gonna tell him, Pat. What? This is awkward. You're married. Audience. You're married. Oh yeah, Mike knows that. Oh, I thought that was where Mike. Was yeah, married. no, I didn't know you were married. I didn't think oh. you were married. When did you? Yeah, get we married? did it in Vegas. When was that? Years ago. I wasn't even invited. I know. <laughs> All you're right, the well, best man. You didn't show up. Listen, it's it's a sad day when Manolis has to figure out what the hell I meant. So, <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, Manolis, for clearing that up. I didn't think you and Lindsay were married. That's why I thought yeah. you maybe got ideas. <laughs> My bad. He never uh, brings it up. You know what? Listen, I'm done with you, Patrick. <laughs> Everybody say hello to Manolis. Hey, uh, Mike. Hey, guys. How you doing? I'm happy to be here. Happy to be anywhere, to tell you the truth. <laughs> Last time we did the show, Manolis, you were in your dining room which is uh, also your bedroom. Right. Um, and uh, and now you've moved again. So this is, uh, and this is the living quarters, uh, the living room area. Yeah, it's the living room. It's fun. I wish I could show you because I put my computer on a chair and then my camera had nowhere to mount it. So I drilled, it's an old chair that was shit. So I drilled a hole in it, put the, <laughs> the, the thing that you, you know, the tripod, I closed it, put it through the hole, taped it, and put the camera on it. I wish I could show you. It's so fucking, so ghetto, dude. <laughs> um, I, I, uh, you know what? I, it's too bad it wasn't a swivel chair because then you could just spin it around the room and it'd be awesome. But you can maybe, see, maybe next there's time. my Lou Reed picture. If I lift the chair a bit, oh, yeah, see? yeah, a little bit, yeah. Uh, that's yeah, my we Lou see Reed, Reed anyway. Yeah, we that's can guess the, it's Lou. The one thing I never do. What? Reed. What? Reed. Reed. <laughs> 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 he thinks that's how you spell it, by the way. <laughs> it must be this August heat, man. I am so slow on picking up on everything. Uh, but you know what? You know who's not slow? Our special guest, everybody. Please say hello to our good friend, Mr. Scott Falconbridge. Hey, guys. How you doing? Good, good. Good. Welcome. <laughs> so much energy in the show. I know. It's really popping. I gave him. I gave him the big intro and everything. And I know. Going, oh, oh, I know. Scott. Panels are picking up. Pat needs his coffee. <laughs> Howdy, how how are you, man? How how you? It's been a while since we've been able to catch up. Yeah. Uh, we've had you on the show back, I think, in our studio days, back when I still right. had a job at the radio station. So uh, how have things been with you? You've been you've been busy. I know you got some cool stuff in the in the percolator right now, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, well, first of all, I'm alive. Hey. All right. It's a big win in COVID. It's awesome. It's a big win. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're uh, starting to do live shows again, which is great. And also putting together this uh, Falcon Bridge. This is my show airing September 11th, 8 p.m. at the unknown comedy uh, It's a show about everything, sketch, improv, stand up, a lot, lot of pre-recorded stuff, some live stuff, going back and forth. It'll be on Zoom, um, using a Zoom format, but interactive, live, a show about everything. Uh, should be fun. Is it a lot of fun putting it together? Has it been a lot of fun getting back fully into that creative pose and, and jamming new ideas out? And 
Yeah, well, I mean, it started off as something to do. <laughs> and and then uh, uh, it's it's been fun to do because I've been working with a lot of other people on it. Rodney Ramsey from Montreal, Daniel Woodrow, uh, Manolis is is helping us out. A guy named David Pride from Montreal's doing it. My wife is in the show, uh, and uh, a lot of lot of sketches. Some of them, when it started, we're shooting everything at home because of of COVID, and Good. we started to branch out. Pat. Uh, directed one of the uh, one of the uh, sketches that we did uh, at Levity, um, so it's it's been a way to interact with people, and uh, it's been like just a lot of fun to do. September 11th at the Unknown Comedy Club dot com. Yes, that's where you will find uh, Scott Falcon Bridge's new show. Uh, you did you actually uh, you went out and performed some comedy out in Montreal recently, did you not? Yeah, I did a weekend at the Comedy Nest. Yeah, uh, yeah. Montreal's finest stand-up club. And uh, when I say finest, I mean the only one. <laughs> <laughs> I knew the answer. I knew it. I was like, isn't the only one, though? <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is now. It is now. But, uh, yeah, it's um, it was uh, four solo shows, nice. starting to get the, the feel of it again, you know, starting to do comedy, uh, seeing old friends. It was overwhelming, to be honest with you. Because, you know, when you haven't done stand-up in a long time and then you're doing, like, 40-minute shows and, you know, um, you're you're going out a lot and you, you're used to, like, sitting in your house all the time and, yeah. and you do perform, you're wearing no pants and, you're, you know, you know you're, you're just not accustomed to having to go out and interact. But so I, I, I had a little, I had a little meltdown at the end of the weekend, you know, just, just to, just to... It's like, oh. Yeah, it was just a lot, but uh, yeah. it was fun. It was a lot of fun to do. Uh, well, we are uh, very glad that you've taken some time out to uh, hang out with us. And this, of course, uh, Friday at 420 has never been described as fun to do, but it is something that we do. So let us get to it. We've got our envelopes with our random topics right here that I stole from my former employer. Uh, and uh, Scott, as usual, our special guest gets to go first. So to you, your first topic, these are all been uh, shuffled. You get topic number five. I forgot five. that we do this. This is great. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, all right, we're still doing the old format. Let's oh, do yeah. it. There's no Plinko board, though. Do I get Do I get to make fun of Manolos the whole time? The is whole that... time. All right. Nothing's Bonus changed. points. Bonus right. points for making fun of Manolos. And, and yeah. that's why he wears the muscle shirt, just so he can show you. I can, I can beat you up if I need to. Hot, uh, dude. <laughs> Sky, it's hot. Yes, you don't have air conditioning in that house. I'm always hot, bro. Oh, okay, sorry, man. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. That's the answer to question number eight. Uh, question oh, number five. One, can I throw one in, one thing yeah. in before we start? Absolutely, man. I just want to mention, you know, when we did this on radio, Manolas would always wear his glasses with the with the little sticker on it. <laughs> the, the, the joke never translated <laughs> on radio, but thank God for COVID because now due to the magic of COVID and Zoom, we can actually get Manolas's I'm wearing glasses with a sticker on them gag. <laughs> it, it only took about three years for that for that to really work, but good on you, Matt uh, Manolas, for sticking it out. <laughs> Scott's the first guy, though. I've been doing this since I ever started buying prescription no, or like readers. I always just leave the stickers on. But Scott was the first guy. I did a gig with him. I sat down. He saw my glasses. He saw the stickers. He was like, he goes, like this. he goes, all this is all he said. He grabbed my glasses. He goes, uh, uh, he takes them off, <laughs> takes the stickers off and give them back to me. That's what he did. He didn't ask. He didn't ask why the stickers were there. He just goes, uh, uh. This is not happening on my watch. I loved it. I was like, it was such a, it's one of my favorite moments of my life where he's like, I love it. Where like he just did. I don't, I am not even going to deal with why they're there, but they're coming off right now. Yeah. Manolas, I could not fix the ridiculous t-shirts you wore, but I was going to fix your glasses. <laughs> well, Scott's one of our closest and nearest friends. He just, he's not going to put up with your bullshit, Manolis. Yeah. He yeah. never did. You, you can not... be a 40-year-old man and wear t-shirts made for a 17-year-old boy, but you are not, <laughs> you are not wearing that sticker on your glasses. Unfortunately, well, over Scott, the line. Scott can't reach out and, and do anything oh. about the sticker on Manolis' glasses oh. now. So, so, uh, so let's get into our first topic on Friday at 420 with Scott Falkenbridge. Scott, your topic is... 
What is the best flavor of Jello? What is the best flavor of Jello? Oh, dude, there's not even a question. Lemon. Lemon is the best flavor. It's it's because it's like light and it's good for gags because it looks like pee. And uh, that's a good reason. It's uh, it's it's it's, it's, it's not even a, there's just something about that light lemon taste and. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no question, hundred percent lemon. What, fully, what do I win? What fully I committed win? to lemon, man. I, I you know what? I, I think a package of lemon jello for sure. If we can find out what your address is, we'll get that mailed over. Patrick Coppolino. Uh I don't know the official flavor, but uh, red. <laughs> I like, I like the flavor red. What is for jello? What is, what is that? I don't, know. I don't know. It's either hey, strawberry, it's cherry. Stress. I can only guess it's a number of red things. It gets strawberry. I think that they call it strawberry. Yeah. One of the great thing Probably. about the answer is you can tell this panel is not rehearsed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, we don't know the question. <laughs> the uh, the only time I eat jello in the last I don't know ten years, maybe longer, is has been at like buffets. And it's always like every time you go into a buffet, like like the Mandarin, you're always like excited to go. And then after your first plate, you're like, ah, that was just okay, but I'm gonna eat more because I'm it's all you can eat. And then by the time you eat the Jello, you're already depressed and full, and it's not. Yeah, I don't know. How do they cut in those squares there? It's always cut in squares. (laughs) I I can only imagine the yeah. You know what? There's no. We've, there's we've no, started there's strong. no fork holes right we've yeah started there shouldn't there be a bunch of jello with holes in them <laughs> like with, how do you cut them how does it, it why is it a bunch well, of square probably the same way you'd cut a like a batch of brownies or is but it I, like an or maybe like an ice tray maybe put them in ice trays my like, why is this such a mystery to you <laughs> yeah like you can't fathom it's like it's gelatin you, wait, you, can, you scott, can use your hands to break them apart do you do you know the answer scott I, I, I don't know the answer because I don't uh, feel nah. it's a worthy question. Nah. <laughs> it's not a how, worthy question. How, but it, it is a question. How it about, is a question. How about, Manolas, you answer this question? <laughs> What's the best jello flavor? Uh, blue. Blue. I don't know what flavor blue is, That's but I used to. I used does to anybody love know what the flavor blue is? I'm going to guess blueberry. No. It's not? Do you know, no. Mike? Yes. Do you I know? Do. Of course what I is do. It? I know all the stupid answers. Tell me! <laughs> it's, it's raspberry. Okay. Oh. Yeah. yeah. They, My... And the only way to differentiate right between the strawberry and the raspberry, they can't make them both red. Otherwise, that would oh. confuse Patrick. Oh, when I don't I, like this red. Can I change my lemon answer to <laughs> yellow? <laughs> yellow, yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, <laughs> Sky. Yes. Because no one seems to know what a flavor is. <laughs> What's your favorite flavor? Red. Yeah. <laughs> I just, even as a kid, my least favorite so, flavor was always purple. I never, we, me and my brother would eat the jello so fast, then we'd make another batch, and we, we weren't patient enough, and then we'd start eating oh, half half God. jello, like almost liquid jello. Like it was more kind of watery jello. And then we got to the point where we just, we just said, screw it. We just poured the powder in water and we just drank it. When you explain it, it doesn't get any better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You mean like Kool Aid? You drank Jello like Kool Aid? Yeah, we would just get two cups of water and we'd pour like half the Jello in the one cup and half the Jello in the other, and then we just drink Jello water. Jesus. I know it was horrible. Can, can I? I'm seizing control of the show now. I'm kind of okay. taking it back. I'm going to mute your mics. This is been. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> I am taking back control. If you're watching at home and you're thinking, I'm going to check this out, check out of this thing. Hold on. Yeah. I'm taking control back. We're going to get this thing back on the rails. I thought you were going to start with a light topic. <laughs> Jello, then we'll move on. So we're going to spend 20 minutes on Jello. All right. Yeah. Listen, here's the, you know what? Here's, here's the best part. I said, Manolis told me Scott Falconbridge is our guest. And I go, great guest. Because every time Scott's on, we laugh ourselves silly. And Scott, yeah, we do, I, actually. It's you. You because I need help picking on these two dumb skulls, and right. you do such a good job of it, man. You know, I I spent a lot of time with them, so <laughs> I, uh, I know all their foibles. And honestly, it doesn't it doesn't really take much, right? <laughs> I'm gonna sit back. You know, Manolis is gonna be saying something. Just yeah. let them talk. Just let them talk, Mike, and then and then obviously drop things. the hammer down. 
I went to his house to do a skit. I was so impressed that I'm like, Scott wants me in his house. Like, like I couldn't believe like he was okay with me being there. I didn't want you in my house. I he wanted needed... you in the sketch and the sketch was in my house. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but you trusted me to be there. I was so flattered. <laughs> like, like we, I'm like, we trusted you. To, yeah. Did you notice we shot your scene, your lines first? And yeah, then and I... we got you to leave. Yes. I, <laughs> yeah, I and did. Why notice are you that. standing around? I would have done the same thing, Scott. I'm on your side here, bro. All right. <laughs> was anything missing in your house, Scott, after Manolis was there? No, I, everything. Uh, everything we, 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 we shot uh, in the kitchen. We kept a close eye on them. Um, <laughs> it was actually a lot of fun. We had a we had a, a young director for that one. And my favorite part of that was the guy when he 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 he, uh, he was nervous. So every time he was going to start a scene, instead of instead of yelling action, he yelled cut. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Really? Go, okay, everybody ready? Okay, cut. 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 <laughs> that could have been a sketch unto itself. Yeah, That's it was great, funny. but it, it, he did a great job. It was All right. Uh, Friday at 420, Scott Falkenbridge, our special guest, Manolis, Patrick Coppolino, myself, Mike Neighbor. So glad you're with us here live on Facebook, and we appreciate you hanging out with us. Uh, here we go with uh, this topic, and this one is for Patrick. Uh, this is number two, in case you're keeping track at home, envelope number two. Um, and I, I don't want this to divulge into a uh, – uh, uh, or evolve into a, a, a an argument – uh, over one way or another. Okay. I just want to know this, okay? And I don't know if you've run into this, but here's my question. Maybe you guys can put me straight. Uh, Patrick Coppolino, your question is, why are anti-vaxxers so angry? That's a uh, good question. I, yeah, it's, because it's okay question. for you to either be for vax or against vax, but why well, are they so angry about it? Well, I don't know. I think they're they're... They're upset that we're in the situation, like everyone is. Uh, right. But they seem to need someone to blame, not for COVID and not for the disease spreading, because they don't think that's what's happening. They just they're they need someone to blame for the lockdowns and not being able to right. live their life like they did before. I don't know. And then they right. see, I don't know. Like I don't know, but it's funny. It's funny you brought that up though, because like I literally today, I heard about it yesterday, but I think it was maybe official today. The that Pfizer has been FDA approved. Yes, and That's that not... makes me laugh because it's all I've already seen it in the comments, and I knew it was going to happen. Um, what it, what all the people that have been like, "You're going to take that experimental drug. It's not even FDA approved," and blah blah blah. Now it is. Now they're all. Now they all say, "Oh yeah, it's FDA approved." <laughs> <laughs> like it's still not good enough. They don't understand that any medicine that has been if, FDA approved had at one point not been FDA approved. There was a process. But they wouldn't. You know take, what I mean? They wouldn't now take it's approved, and now that it's approved, that's a conspiracy because they're just approving it to get people to take it. And like, it's just it's insane. Okay. Now, you know what? That's a, <laughs> those are very good answers, and I and I'm glad I'm not the only one who sort of has been pondering. Uh, this thought. Manolis, do you have uh, something if, you want to add to this conversation? If it was a fake FDA-approved situation, <laughs> they would have done it right from the get-go then. They wouldn't wait this long to approve it. You know what I mean? So it's probably they probably did what they're supposed to do. Yeah. Well, so. I, did, did you see... I saw Bill Burr on uh, Conan, and he was saying that he... He doesn't buy the whole conspiracy that they're trying to kill us with the vaccine because if that's what they're doing, he's like, if they kill all the people that are willing to comply with the government, then all they're left it with is it's genius. He, he called them. He's like, then they're all they're left with is all the people that uh, he called them all Fonzies with their leather jackets. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that he's was like a... all the people too cool to listen to the government. Why would the government only want the people who aren't going to listen to them left? Man, right? It was actually a super, so if, super if, good. Yeah. Point. Yeah. He, make, he makes it look so easy. Scotty, uh, let you. Uh, can I let Scotty jump in yeah, on this? Go ahead. Go ahead. The yeah, question well, was, if you have an opinion on this, why are anti-vaxxers so angry? Not necessarily why are they anti-vaxxers, but why are they so angry? Well, because they've always been angry. Because they're always like <laughs> yes. waiting for the next thing to be angry with. Right. I mean, yeah. It. It. You know. It's. If you listen to them, they, they're they're always uh, uh, not trusting something. Uh, like they're just you know, and it doesn't matter like as pat mentioned what's thrown out there uh like it, it's just they're just going to come up with another reason it's not dictated by logic it's 
dictated by fear and the need to not like trust anything. It's, right. I, I've been watching uh, The Walking Dead and I think The Walking Dead is a perfect analogy for this whole thing because yes. the whole thing could be over in three to six weeks. Like uh, if we just did sensible things, but like Walking Dead New Zealand would be three episodes. They would together. <laughs> <laughs> like, would, you know, shut down. Kill the zombies, and the female prime minister would say, "Okay, everybody, stay out of the woods." And that would be, like that. Would be, <laughs> that, 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 that like there would, it, but instead, you know, what we have is like we have this gene in our brain, which is like, okay, we're going to do the one thing that makes that takes this longer every week. <laughs> And and that's a, so so every time there's a solution, they just refuse to do the solution. So look, yeah. all we got to do is stay inside for six weeks. That's all you got to stay inside for six weeks. No, I got to go lick that post. Okay, all you got to <laughs> do is put a mask on. No, hugs over masks. Yeah. Okay, all you have to do is a vaccine. It's all you have to do. You do just do just do the vaccine. No, you're not putting that shit in my body. <sighs> <laughs> now let's go to mcdonald's it's 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 all just uh you know they have a need to rebel fight back have yeah. issues mm, right and that that's it like you yep. can't really make logic of it it's yeah. not based on logic they're angry at themselves <laughs> or angry at this one can like be angry on why things aren't working out in their lives and there's like they focus on this instead of themselves and just right those good those you got you guys that's 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 great stuff i'm not sure an anti-vaxxer watching and that's which case you hate us all now <laughs> yeah we should uh, have had at least one on I, I i'm gonna live with that um <laughs> you can live with that yes in fact i'm gonna live with it a long time because i'm back <laughs> I had an anti-vaxxer say to me, like, the, I was, I didn't realize it was an anti-vaxxer, but I was like, my dad, I was like saying how my dad died from it. And he was like, did he though? Like, I was like, oh, <laughs> wow. yeah, really? Wow. Dude? I know. I re I'm like, I'm so wow. dead inside. So that was the only reason I could deal with it. But I was like, really? I was like, really, dude? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Really? Do you even say that? Yeah, like, come on, like, do you think I, like, you think I wasn't around when it all went down? You think I didn't notice the difference between him being sick and like, like a regular cold? And this, like, I, I tell yeah. you, I fucking lived right through this to, with my dad today, and I'll tell you, my whatever, the, this was fucking, if you, whatever you want to call this, and people call it COVID, it, it was fucking COVID. Like, my dad is, just, my dad was as tough as nails, and it fucking took him. Yeah. Uh, this is Friday at 420. We appreciate you hanging out with us uh, live on Facebook. Scott Falconbridge is our special guest. Uh, we have a brand new topic. This one goes to Manolis first. Manoli, your topic on Friday at 420. Topic number nine. Name your favorite summertime activity. What's your favorite uh, summertime activity? What's my favorite summertime activity? I'm going to go. I'm going to reach back to being a child and uh go i love uh water parks and going down the water slide there's something so magical about going down that water slide i it's... did not see that answer coming brother because i thought for sure just right to masturbation and we were going to move on oh i masturbate during <laughs> while i during go down the... no don't say not while no, you're this, going this, down the water this slide the worst, <laughs> this is the worst thing <laughs> you want to hear the worst? this is a horrible story the oh worst thing I ever no. did we were like uh now we're like like late teens me and my buddies went to some water park somewhere we drove there i forget which one it was and uh we there was this one one of the water slides had a, like the, the t it was covered so you, you couldn't see like it was dark for like 20 seconds and then you come out and you could see the sky again so we'd stop in that tunnel and stand on the sides and let people go by and if we had to take a piss we'd take a piss and let people go through our streams we did that, yeah. Sorry, what 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 water park was that? <laughs> the one. Oh, that it was. For, in the, yeah. it, it was for sure the one here. Yeah, it was called the Zantano's household. <laughs> yeah, the one on the way to Niagara Falls. Uh, was that place? I forget. They had a, like a uh, roller skate outside. Roller like skate. Wild Waterworks. It was no. It was on the way to. It was halfway to Niagara Falls. I don't think it was there anymore. But it was. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't. Someone in the comments said Ontario Place. No, no, it was an Ontario. Ontario place. 
But we would uh, we would put our backs against the wall, and then it, we like we there used to be one in uh, Putum's Landing or whatever it was called. Because remember they had Tivoli's Miniature World there, and there was like a water park there. There was a bunch of stuff there, and it all got torn <laughs> down. So so people people would go like through by us, and like going like and our piss would be like going right up. Yeah. See, and that's when people <laughs> thought they were at Tivoli's Miniature World. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even see it. Uh, well, thank you for that answer, Manolis. Uh, I don't know who follows that up. Maybe Scott, you have something. Uh, favorite summertime activity? Who do you uh, like to I'm urinate living on? The dream here. <laughs> who do you like to urinate? <laughs> yeah, my uh, <laughs> my favorite summertime activity is to walk near a water park <laughs> <laughs> and not get beat on. Uh, no, I, I I'm gonna go. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna go with uh cycling i've been cycling all summer oh wow excellent and uh yeah just uh, up and down the the lake shore along hamilton up in the up in the what we call the mountains but uh you know the escarpment the escarpment yeah uh yeah and i i buy all sort of fancy bike clothes and and i'm one of those guys zipping by it so it's great it's is great. this your is this your first year cycling no second because second I start, year okay yeah i started last year and um yeah like bikes are gone like the, 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 there's no supply of bikes now yeah i know i know and yeah. it, it's uh somehow i managed to pick up a a, a high-end carbon bike and, and and ride it but it's it's been uh it's it's been my escape it's awesome it's just awesome and nobody pees on you and um <laughs> you know Unless Manolas drives by hanging one out the side with him. Yeah, we, don't, we, don't. we don't invite Manolas. We, have, we avoid those areas. Um, it is amazing. I think it's amazing. And I, I, and I don't think a lot of people would realize, unless you have done some cycling more recently, and I mean just, you know, if you haven't sort of ridden a bike since you were a kid or whatever, mm -hmm. the cycling tracks in and around Hamilton, I'm sure in Burlington, yeah. I mean, it's amazing what we've done, right? We've created like an amazing cycling track if you want to get out there and use it. Yeah. And you see hordes of people like, uh, like in groups and, and they, they all buy the same, the same like uniform and, and uh, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're all decked out and they, they come, they come in through like, there's an Oakville to Hamilton circuit and, right. and uh, they, they cycle through and yeah, it's a, it, it's a lot of fun. And, uh, and it's, all, it's, I think it's better in the fall actually because it's not quite as hot right yes uh but, yeah uh, th today is is not not good cycling weather today no no uh, I, I, I do early morning or or, or, or later right. in the cooler patrick capolino favorite summertime <laughs> activity go uh i don't know i despise winter so much that anything <laughs> in the summer is a pretty good time I, I i can't stand being outside when it's cold and snowy and stuff but so because you got uh, you but you recently have really gotten into camping yeah that, that's what i was gonna say if i had to pick something that would that would probably be it i like camping i like but camping. only for a few days at a time well and now you have a new suit to do it in so now you're gonna be like spiffy yeah, out there brother. My... <laughs> yeah yeah like, great don't worry about it friday at 4 20 yeah. with scott falconbridge uh scott who else is in this show of yours that debuts on september 11th on the unknown comedy club dot com uh daniel woodrow rodney ramsey manola zantonos who <laughs> I manoli manoli uh, a lot of fun who, it was a lot of fun now but it's named for you scott so are you was this your original idea and then you've dragged people in to that's your exactly circle? what's happened yeah, okay I just, okay as i uh, i get an idea and i go hey do you want to you know, shoot this with me. Um, this would be a good person, David that. Pride from Montreal is also doing it. Um, my wife is in it, and uh, she. You guys are great together. Yeah, but she's an actual actress, so she, she oh, comes she, with experience. Yeah, she has acting chops. Um, wow. But uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, it, it's been a lot of fun because I've been able to like pull talents together, and yeah. you know. Um, and like I said, Pat uh, directed some stuff, and he'll probably direct more stuff. And and this for, the first episode is September 11th, but you already have a couple of other episodes. Like you're already building the the follow ups. 
yeah, they're 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 written. I'd like to say it's going to come out every week, but I just can't do that's it that lot, fast. Man. No, that's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. But uh, we tried to do this show every week, and we we can't even pull that off. And we're <laughs> as you know, unscripted. Right, right. No, it, it's it's a lot of. I have scripted the other two, and and uh, you know we'll start shooting them pretty soon. But as, like as soon as we start, we finish shooting this, then we had to start advertising it, and and you know that's that's a whole ball game too it's been a lot of fun but um it you're we're, do, we're doing everything we look forward to the debut on september 11th so after just to so help me understand just because it is in internet net based will it be available for for streaming after the 11th will we be able to still go to the, that website and find it oh yeah we're uh, i'm not sure exactly how we're going to stream it but after the original unknown comedy club uh presentation it will okay. be streamed um and you know it, we're going to have lots of uh really good stuff like every every show you know my wife wishes me luck like that um and uh oh you could tell she's an actor yeah <laughs> can, can you see the commitment um yeah so it you know it, it's it's just gonna be a lot of fun uh excellent uh we look forward to a september 11th watch for that and uh that is at the unknown comedy club.com you'll find the uh episode uh debuts on september the 11th uh we're here with scott falkenberg <laughs> Benoli, uh patrick coppolino with a little tickle in his throat maybe it's covid huh. maybe not don't worry about it uh here we go with uh our new topic and this one is for you scott topic number seven what word do you use too much do you have a like a crutch is there something you oh, damn it i just wish i didn't say that as often ah uh, that's uh, oh my god I wish I had more self-awareness uh, <laughs> to, to even know. <laughs> to even know, that would make me an even better comedian <laughs> if I knew which word I used too much. I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't know. You don't I don't really think it's no. Well, probably uh, uh, all my uh, f bombs. Um, you big with the f bombs? Yeah. Well, I'm not big with them, but okay. I use when I'm in, uh, some, I use them more than I have to. I don't know why, especially when the kids are around. It's weird. <laughs> why part of good parenting. Yeah. Why do I do that? Uh, I don't know. I know the word, ah, uh, I use the word, uh, way too often. Oh, you drop that in as just a little, you know, so somebody else doesn't try to jump in and steal the thunder. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, that's always been, and I worked in radio for a long time and that was my, that was always my crutch. Oh, that was terrible. I mean, it's like, because I would, ah, 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 you know, right. And that was like, just, Oh, it can be really annoying to some people, but uh, it was something I, you know, I tried to get rid of, but it was it's very difficult too. Mm -hmm. Uh, Manolis as uh, the head dude on this show, what, uh, word do you use too often? Dude. Uh, Dude, I used a uh, dude was dude still a lot. I still use the word dude a lot, but I used to, I tend to use bro more now because I think it's just sillier and funnier you know, and stupider. Yeah. I wish you'd stay with dude because too many people use bro and bro is like it. Uh, I, you, I, you, dude was yours, but you can't own bro. Right. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 but what the one thing I, I seem to say a lot and Patrick knows this and, and cause I, I don't, apparently I use it too easily but as i use a uh, genius <laughs> yeah he's got a problem with that word yes. or either he's got a problem with it or just like his standard for genius for is genius. just incredibly low yeah, so I, low i think that has a lot to do with it it's so it's so low everything impressed i get so impressed so easily he's so easily and i'm like oh my god that's genius i go like that and i freak out and people you're like oh my god if they don't if i don't know them well and they're like like they get yeah. freaked out because like why is that all it took yeah like last year he found out hot dog buns are for hot dogs <laughs> they fit perfect wow. they're genius genius <laughs> yeah or, or the time he found out that pickles don't grow on trees <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but they're from cucumbers. Yeah, yeah. That's right. and that's that's, but that's real. That gave him an existential crisis. He didn't know what was what anymore. <laughs> yeah. He started yeah. to question. He's like, "Yeah, what did you say?" You're like, "I don't know. Were al apples always apples, or did they used to be bananas?" So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, my, my favorite was when uh, he asked me as we drove past Terry Fox Drive if Terry Fox Drive is named after Terry Fox. <laughs> <laughs>
It was just a coincidence. <laughs> that was genius. There was a fox named Terry. Um, yeah, you know what? Nice. When it comes to hot dogs, though, what would really be genius is if they sold uh, six wieners uh, for the six buns. The fact that they sell wieners in collections of eight and buns in collections of six it's is so really, really infuriating. I could buy more. Buy more. Yeah. You got to buy, buy more, more of one or the other. Genius. <laughs> yeah, that genius. is genius, actually. I bought a, I made a hamburger yesterday myself, but I didn't have uh, bread, but I had a wrap, like, like one of those flat pieces of bread. And so I cut, I cooked the hammer, cut it all in pieces, put some cheese and I wrapped it in there and I ate it like a wrap. And I was oh. like, and I had a moment to myself it was by myself. I'm like, I'm a genius. Can I tell you what you ate when all this? What? You had a beef burrito. <laughs> That's all that was. <laughs> you know what a hamburger's made out of, right? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I just found out beef, I guess. <laughs> I love I love the fact that Manolis had to explain to us what a wrap was. No, but that, that's why it was so good. Because it's, <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's the exact same good ingredients yeah. as a burrito. Flat bread. I, I cut it up. I minced, it, I minced up the meat. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Uh, Patrick Coppolino, uh, you are, get to weigh in on our talk. I don't even remember what the hell it was. Oh, yeah. What word do you use? Patty Cop, what do you use? Uh, what do you use too much? Levity? I don't know. If, uh, yeah, probably. I don't know if there's a specific <laughs> word. I'm, I'm more of a, a phrase guy. <laughs> I there, I say um, that's crazy too much because I'm a really like introverted. I don't care much about Most engaging things. in conversations. So a lot of times people will be talking to me and then I repeat. I just respond by default with that's crazy. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> like no and, matter and, what, yeah. And that's you know, crazy. you you understand. I mean, you realize that we know that you don't really think it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like Normally, most... if I'm talking to my Nolas, I'll go, "That's crazy," and he goes, "Listen, bud, you want me to let you go? You sound like you're busy." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can tell when he's not listening. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. He's totally tuned out. He's got the VR <laughs> goggles on. He's already yeah. he's on Mount Rushmore. But. but... If yeah. you ask Lindsay, uh, the phrase I say too often is "I will." I will <laughs> do Can that. You do dishes. I will. I will. Can you do this? I will. Oh. Why don't you make the bed? I will. So wow. She so she started with the uh, yeah. Hey, can we make love? I, we will. She's like, you didn't do the dishes. I asked we you will. ten times, and I go, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Friday at 420, Scott Falcon Bridge. We're almost out of time. We got time just enough to go around the horn, get our last plugs in. Uh, anything else we'd like to add to the program? And uh, Patrick, I'm actually going to start with you because I want you to tell me a little bit about Levity. I know I saw some awesome news. Our, our buddy Mace Galoni is going to play a couple of shows th at the Lev. Yep. Uh, the yeah. Lev. The Lev. <laughs> <laughs> That's what, what, is that coming up this weekend, isn't it? Yeah, yeah this Saturday. Is it That's sold out show. already? Uh, no, not yet. There's a few few tables left, but it, it likely will sell out. Yeah, you've got to go to see Mace Galoni. I He is one of our favorite people. Uh, so funny, and uh, and it's going to be such a great night at the Lev. Yeah, yeah. So we got that coming up. Uh, still, Wednesdays are going strong. Every Wednesday, uh, amateur night. Um, and then I think this Saturday's our last, like one off Saturday. We're going to skip Labor Day weekend, and then starting September 10th, <laughs> we'll be back to Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. Yeah. Go to levitycomedyclub.com for all the details on who's playing, when they're playing, what's That's playing. That's awesome. Um, for, for, the, for the Wednesday nights, uh, could somebody just walk up and, and get in, or, or you, you pretty know, much got to get tickets still in advance? Uh, you can, If there's tables left, you can walk in, sure. But like the last five Wednesdays, I think last Wednesday was the, was the first one where we had um, a few tables left when okay. the show started but then yeah people showed up for those but uh but yeah we advise you right. to get them in advance because we're still limited to about 60 to 70 seats so perfect all right yep. make sure you do that go to levitycomedyclub.com for all your details on what's happening at the lev manoli <laughs> yeah are you staring at your oh thank god I was, you oh, that... is... I was worried what that was at first <laughs> it's still bad but it's that's donnie coy's toilet Oh, oh yeah, you. He texted that to me, and he said he texted me this picture and goes, "Guess where I am," and I knew he was at Donnie's. <laughs> and then I text like this picture to six people, and I guess who's doing this is? And three of them said Patrick Coppolino. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> amazing. And Lindsay was like, are you going to clean the toilet? And Patrick <laughs> I was like, will. I will. Uh, uh, Manoli, is there somebody you'd like to plug? Something you'd like to grease? Something? What? Why are you showing us pictures <laughs> off your phone? That's, that's uh, Joan Rivers in a oh, fancy I frame yeah, that was that. done by Sealed Art. I go there all the time. Uh, Sealed Art, we're going to give a plug to Sealed Art for giving you that? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, it's for it's for levity. Is that that's, how, and no, it's fantastic. Yeah, looks how dope that is. Look how dope that is. <laughs> I, I'm just glad he's no longer holding up a toilet. <laughs> we all are, Scott. Dude, we all are. dude. All right, <laughs> plug away there, Manoli. Come on, what do you got? No, that's it. I was just like Donnie. I, I'm like <laughs> I went there to take a piss, and then I saw the toilet. I was like, this is the only time I was glad that COVID existed because I already had a mask on. <laughs> it was so bad. God damn it, Donnie. I'm like, what is Come this? On, man. Why is there a toilet on, underneath he, he the seat? Care. He just doesn't care. Uh, Scott, uh, we've talked a little bit about your show. Uh, you got any more live gigs coming up, buddy? Are you working on any, uh, you're going to be traveling, doing any live stuff? Yeah, I'll be, uh, uh, well, I'm also doing uh, something called Laughter on the Front Lines for uh, Unknown Comedy Club. Again, that's this Thursday, uh, excuse me, this uh, yeah, this Thursday, uh, I'll be hosting that. And it's all uh, frontline healthcare workers uh, doing awesome. doing comedy. And I'm, I'm, I'm the fake doctor who hosts. And uh, that, that's a lot of fun. Um, and uh, we, we've done it before. Um, I'm going to be September 17th and 18th at the Levity Comedy Club in Hamilton. Yes! Uh, and that, that should be a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, I'm... Just trying to book more gigs. Do your stuff, man. Uh, don't forget, unknowncomedyclub.com is where you'll find Scott's show debuting on September 11th. Please check it out. Uh, check Wait, him out. Uh, what time? Uh, 8 p.m. 8 p.m. 8 p.m. at unknowncomedyclub.com. Don't miss it. And uh, and check him out at what's now being lovingly referred to around the nation as The Lev on September 17th <laughs> and 18th. Uh, Scott, as always, man, always a blast catching up with you, buddy. Continued success, my friend. You too, Mike. Thank you so much. Thank you, boys. Thank you. Uh, and thank, you. thank you to you for watching us here uh, live on Facebook. We appreciate it. Don't forget to check out any of our previous episodes, including some that featured the very funny Scott Falconbridge. You can check those out. Any streaming service, search Friday at 420. You'll find them all there. I believe there are now 4,800 of them. So uh, please go. Make yourself crazy. Uh, you, you will, in fact, go crazy uh, trying to listen to all that. Uh, please, thank you for, very much for uh, tuning in now. And until we get a chance to talk to you again in seven days, have an awesome night. Woo!